What you are seeing right now, I'm saying it again. I'm going to continue to say it again. I'm going to remind you again. I'm going to say it over and over and over. It is what we call in the legal biz a case of first impression. There is nothing like this heretofore. Do not think for a moment that you have seen anything like this, that you have been a part of this, that any history you have, any particular historical perspective in any way prepares you or the world for what's happening right now. Nothing. The world is changed. The rules are different. It's done. It's over. And we're going to start. And I'm telling you right now, please, if this is not, if you have a trigger point, if you are very, very <clears throat> sensitive, if you are one who does not like reality, this is not for you. What I have told you from the beginning, my only, my only, um, I guess my only rule has been to tell you the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. And this is something right now which I have never seen in my professional life where I started 35 years ago doing conventional talk radio. And that is that our relationship with Israel has changed now permanently, irreparably, functionally, trans, transcendentally. It, 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 it is transformational. Do you hear what I'm saying? It was absolutely sacrosanct. You never, ever, ever said anything regarding Israel that wasn't either in praise or neutral. If you said something, you would have that cascade upon you, even though, even if you were Jewish, even if you were from Israel, you were a self-loathing Jew, you were, it, it was, and I don't know if it was because of the of the lobby, or if it was because, I don't know, but it was that way. The NRA used to have that. The NRA, if you said anything, anything against cop-killing bullets, Teflon, you know, wad cutters, uh, uh, any kind of, you, you, you were anti-Second Amendment, and they got you. And then we learned if you dared say anything about uh, 9-11, if you said, Hey, how come Building 7 imploded on itself when it wasn't even hit with it? You're a truther. You're a nut. You're a crazy. Forgive me, I have a cold. You're a nut. You're a crazy truth. If you dare, if you said, you know, I don't know if I believe this story about COVID. You're an anti-vaxxer. You're a sick. You got to. And they would shut you up, shut you down. You'd lose your platform, your position. They would come after you like you, dear God. If you didn't believe in, the, you know, I, I think this 2020 election, you're a denier, you're crazy. You know, I, how do we know Obama was born? You're a birther, you miserable, sick birther, you. I've had my doubts. Not doubts, but there was a time when I was a little suspicious about whether, actually, whether Saddam Hussein was killed. Because we never really saw anything. And bin Laden. I, I never understood. You're up. We were called a deather. You don't remember that one. You don't remember. You were a deather. Those days are over with. Those days are, I'm telling you right now. It has changed forever, transformationally. Now, let's start off <coughs> by saying this. It's almost like the proem, the foreword, the praise, the prolegomenon. Number one, I have nothing against the Jewish people, Israel. I love Israel. If it wasn't for the fact that you got to travel so damn far, it's you've got to see it. I love the people, the, the whole, I mean, it is the, it is the, it is so, and okay, fine. I said it. Jewish friends. I know that doesn't matter. 
I know you're supposed to. You're not supposed to say, well, some of my best friends are black. You know, you're not supposed to say that. But I'm sorry. Let the record reflect. In New York, for this song, <sighs> if ever there was a, a culture, <coughs> an attitude, a response, a, a sense of humor, a, it would be what you would call American Jewish. It would be that. It's what I connect with, identify with. I get it. I get it. I, I've always, uh, oh, my dear friend Pat Cooper for years felt the same way. He said, I should have been born Milton Berle. He said, um, when he, he, he was growing, growing up, he said, being funny in the Italian culture where he was, it was like, what are you, what are you, a clown? It's kind of like the Joe Pesci thing. So let me just get this out of the way. <coughs> let me just get this out of the way. Let me get this out of the way. We have to address this. You always have to say it. The same thing they do is if you talk about black folks, if you say, well, you know, I think if I had to figure out how we help black folks, we got to figure out why is there such a crime problem? There you go. But, but it's real. It's true. I don't want to hear about that. You're an anti, you're a racist. How come 14% of the population is 67%? Stop it. Don't talk about it. Do you see? We, we hate the truth. We hate to hear things that we <clears throat> either don't like or we have, and a lot of you do this as well, you love to jump on it. You love to jump on it. We hate reality. I read this thing about, uh, there's this new diet out, I guess, in the Daily Mail. They said it's a great diet for, for, for uh, reducing heart attack. It's called, you know what? It's called no saturated fats, lay off the meat, LDL, lower it, and that's it. I don't know what you want to talk about. No, that's not it. Because we don't like it. No, because we're a bunch of carnivores and we, you know, and we make this bullshit up because we don't know what we're talking about. So that's basically who we are. Okay. So there, I let, I said that, I got that out of the way. And that's the way it is. Next rule. I'm going to have to ask myself whether your fight is getting into Who's never known this? Never get involved in a civil war. Never take sides. Ever have a friend of yours who uh, they're getting a divorce and you're kind of equally friends with the husband and the wife <clears throat> and they're getting a divorce and you might say, well, you know, you're, no, 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 you're going to lose. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. They always say that one of the worst things for cops, one of the scariest things for cops is to be a part of a domestic altercation. That's where most police, okay, you understand that? You understand what I'm saying? These are these are these are these are realities. It's changed with Israel. It's changed. How many people here are divorced? Anybody here divorced? Or did you ever break up? Or maybe quit a job? Excuse me for this. I'm dying over here. You ever done that? Okay. I've seen this. I've seen this. And this is the most important thing in the world for people to understand. Uh, <clears throat> this is the most important thing in the world. Now listen to me carefully. Sometimes when people are married, have a bad marriage, they wake up one day and they say, you know what? That's it. That's it. The wife, the husband does something. And you say, I can't do this anymore. That's it. I'm done. <clears throat> I'm done. I'm done. What was it? No, no, that's just, uh, uh, it, and, and it's just something to say, like, I've had it. I've done it. I've, 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 I've had it. I've had it. Okay. Had it. That's the end of it. I'm done. More people right now <clears throat> are doing that with being this lockstep Israeli or Israel fan or, or acolyte or whatever. Now, I've never been like that in the first place. I tended to kind of believe that, you know, this was a different situation. It's all changed. And you know who changed it? Hamas. Oh, this drives people crazy. Hamas came along and they said, we're going to do something. And everybody said, well, this is, this is going to change everybody's opinion. When you bring up the fact, when you bring up the fact of what Hamas did, you, you, are, you are going to, once and for all, you're going to put an end. This is going to be their death knell. Really? 
their death knell? You sure about that? Let me tell you why it's not their death knell and why, believe it or not, there are more people who are who are in not 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 in favor of, but there are more people who are listening for the first time for reasons we don't really know why. But in the meantime, dear friend, let me ask you, let me tell you right now. Let me let me bring it to your attention. Let me tell you that I want you to please like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell so you're notified. And by the way, not only hit the bell, but hit that that act that that activity uh thing whatever you want to call it that that um so that your it activates your being notified you got what i'm saying you got what i'm saying good now in the meantime i want something very i want you to listen very very important this is this is very very critical especially when we're talking about parts of the world where there is no water food electricity whatever i want you to hear about what you need to do to secure your emergency food in the event that it hits the fan and believe me it will so listen carefully the smartest thing that you can do right now is to pay attention and listen to what I'm telling you right now. In the event of disaster, in the event of something calamitous, there are three things that are critical to survival, food, water, and energy. And I'm here to talk about the food part. And that's preparewithlionel.com. My Patriot Supply is simply the premier food storage, emergency food storage company in the world. And they have right now a deal for you that I want you to pay attention to and avail yourself of. It's $200 off a three-month emergency food supply kit. Now, this is what everybody should have initially. But this is this will get you going. This is an introductory. We're talking a 25-year shelf life. 21 varieties of the most delicious foods and drinks and snacks you can imagine. We're talking 120 pounds of food in resealable pouches with oxygen absorbers. 120 pounds of food in six water-resistant buckets that are modular and stacked perfectly. They're simply the smartest things you can do, the wisest thing you can do, because I'm telling you, when there's calamity, when there's shutdown, when there's martial law or tsunamis or weather or, or strikes or riots or whatever, stores close down. And when stores close down, food is unavailable. And when food is unavailable, people are going to go nuts. You know it and I know it. Preparewithlionel.com. Don't think. Don't review this. Don't give this a lot of thought. Just do this. Go to preparewithlionel.com and take care of this. Take advantage of this, I should say, this incredible deal that's not going to last for a long time. Preparewithlionel.com. It's that serious. I always ask people, I always say, don't, don't, don't think too much about this. It's like somebody before said, hey, take your vitamin D3 and zinc. It's like, no, I'm sick. Yeah, but take your zinc. No, 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 no. Zinc's not going to do anything now. It's beforehand. Or zinc. And also get, get zinc in food. Get zinc in vegetables. What? What? I check your D3 levels every year. What? We just say this thing. Take vitamin C. What? I'm sick. Good night. We, we just say things. We, <clears throat> we, we, we just say stuff. It's who we are. It's what we are as Americans. We just repeat tropes and memes and things that we say. Now, I, I, I have to say this. I'm hearing this for the first time and you've got to pay attention and you can only learn if you're listening, not if you're talking. And I'm hearing so many people who say, you know, this is real. And I've got a friend of mine who is very, 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 very nice. He's very, he's very, he's wonderful. He's terrific. But he has this idea that if you, he gets a little bit, I don't know what the word is. I said, he gets a little bit, a little crazy, he's Jewish, whenever somebody has a complaint about Israel. I said, listen, I said, you're American first. We're American. I don't know about you. You're not Israeli. You're an American. When we talk, you talk about Biden all the time, so do I. We, we talk about Biden. We talk about, they talk about BB. We talk about Biden. What's, what's the difference? Why can't we say this? It's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the strangest thing I've ever seen. I'm not anti-American. I love my country, but my government's a different story. Now, understand a couple of things. This is very important. We'll talk about Hamas in a moment, but <clears throat> there is something, I don't know if we used to call it the Jewish lobby. The Jewish lobby would get you in trouble. If you said there was a Jewish lobby. Now, you could argue whether there was a Jewish lobby. John Mearsheimer says everything has a lobby. The gun lobby, the feminist lobby, environmental lobby. Everybody has, and whether it's a lobby, whether it's an actual organized lobby, or whether it's a group of people, either way, 
it's there is a there is a a formulaic a formulaic a a a a a, a formalized group of people who are themselves <clears throat> representative of a particular way of thinking, and these folks are absolutely important and incredible. Okay, fine. And it was so important. It was so uh, just the same thing. We we do that with the. I, I told you with the Second Amendment. Anything, any you say anything about the Second Amendment? Boom. That's been suspended. Whether it's a lobby or whether it's just a trope or a meme, that's it. Same thing with racist. That's racist. That's racist. Bob Grant was a great uh, talk show host. I used to work with him on WABC. And one day, the rating companies are racist. I don't know if he was a racist. I think he said things that uh, fall under the category in the, in the, in the terms of, of what can and can't be said as racist. But it wasn't. But it was. But, but he got that label. And once he got the label, and then one day he said something, and that was it. It was about Ron Brown, and boom, that was it. They were just waiting. It was a tripwire. They were they were ready to to move in and and take him out. It's that simple to take him out. Those days are over. This is done. It's done. It's done. And who did it? Hamas. Now let's go on the record. Hamas is a terrorist organization. However, however, very, very important. They're a terrorist organization, but they also are a an ideological organization as well. It's not merely terrorism. It's th that that's certainly a part. That is a very serious contingent of their uh, wherewithal. But but that's that's just a part of it. But still, they did more to get people's attention than anything. It started off like this. October the 7th, Hamas comes in. Uh-oh, first of all, there's Rafael Legonde, Admiral Kirby. What do you think he is? Why do you think he is acting like Baghdad Bob? He had to be serious. He had to be a serious man to become an admiral. Is he not afraid of damaging history? Oh, Rafael, please. He's a he's a to be a to be an admiral, you got to be an ass kisser, an obsequious sycophant, a bootlicker, an obsequious fawning lick spittle, a toady, uh, brown noser. Uh, come on, absolutely. To be to play the game, to be admiral, to be general. <sighs> I mean, that's worse than if if you think politicians are full of it. Check out those guys. Look, he's doing. Does anybody listen, to Admiral Kirby? Do you? Does anybody listen to him? Do do you <coughs> listen to him? When when Hamas speaks, when the IDF speaks, do you take what they would that do you take anybody in government for what they say, or do you say, okay, that's what they're saying, that's the official line. That's the official line. I don't believe any of it. Nothing. Because the truth is it's kind of like in the it's not it's not here or there. Okay, it's not here or there, it's everywhere. No. But let me go back to this one particular thing. And thank you, by the way, Raphael. Thank you. There is a... <clears throat> Hamas came along October the 7th, and everything changed. And they said, well, that's going to be the end of Hamas. Why? Well, because once they hear about the atrocity of this, we hear about children who are being decapitated and babies and women, right? That's the end of it. That's it. That is the end. They have done it. They have sunk their battleship, and that is it. Goodbye. Say goodnight, Gracie. We will never hear these people again, right? That's what people thought. That's what people thought. Wrong. Wrong. This blew everyone away, including yours truly. Not only did people listen, but all of a sudden, it didn't make any difference at all. People were saying, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. What do you mean, whatever? Look what they did. Yeah, well. And then they're saying, well, what caused that? What caused it? <coughs> what motivated the wanton slaughter of what? You, what? See? Do you hear what I'm saying? Tell me you're paying attention to this. Did you hear, do you hear what they are saying? You want to do what? The one, dear God, oh my, what? Yes. 
You mean, woman, you wait. You mean to tell <clears throat> you mean to tell me that you want to know what motivated this? Eric, that is Walter says Rodney King's "Can't We All Just Get Along" is in the '90s. It's so '90s. Indulgent parents have allowed spoiled brats to run the board and think that smartphones work. Very good about that. <coughs> well, you know, by the way, uh, Eric, most of the people yesterday we had a bit a big deal in New York in Grand Central. We had the various people coming and protesting, and a lot of them are young, and I don't think they have any idea what the hell they're talking about. There was a group called Atpor. Have you ever heard of Atpor? O T P O R. You ever heard about this? Atpor was a group who, who were responsible for helping out in in, uh, in uh, um, occupation Wall Street. What you do is you go to these folks, and you basically say, "I whether it's Maidan, whether it's a riot, whether whatever it is, you tell me what it is, and I will uh, will will we'll tell you how to." What you gotta have a theme song, you gotta have a, a logo, you gotta have a march, you gotta have you gotta have a lot of people saying a lot of things coming to grips. Okay, fine. And one of the things, believe it or not, listen to me. If you want to get young people to show up, what's the first thing you think you need? Pizza. Think I'm kidding? You have pizza. Pizza is the most important. Pizza is the most important. How many times have you said, well, the the, uh, the the Congress is working late, so now they're bringing in pizza for those long <coughs> working, they're probably the same empty boxes they have stashed in the closet and they just bring them out. These people are full of shite. They love to be a part of the, they, they like to protest. Republicans don't. Conservatives, not interested. They're not interested in any of this stuff. What they do, which is very interesting, they love to scream and yell and do all this stuff. But when it comes to actually doing something and being a part of this thing, they don't do it. And the reason why is because they're fat and they're lazy and they won't get off of their ass and they won't do anything. The left loves to love. They, they love to do it. Let me also tell you something. As we speak, there is the next Rodney Rodney King, not Rodney King, well, Rodney King, there's, there's a next George Floyd ready to go. What do I mean by that? There, there's the next George Floyd who is ready to be, um, he, he, there, there, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say this, but there is a young black man who will be killed by the police <clears throat> in, a, in a shooting that will be considered shaky, okay? Um, immediately, they will jump into it. They have it. Antifa's ready to go, BLM's ready to go, Ben Crump's ready to go, Sharpton, and they're into battle mode. They just have to wait for the right, the right case. I mean, there are some people who are shot, but not, it's got to be the right one. And George Floyd, who, by the way, died from what most people think of as a fentanyl overdose, but nonetheless, that's moot at this point. <coughs> by the way, so is uh, declaring um, the state of Israel, it's moot. Uh, and you can talk about the Nakba all you want. It's moot. It's done. Okay? You understand this? By the way, smartphones are an oxymoron. No, because smart and a phone, it is smart, but yet it is a, it is a phone. Criminal justice is kind of oxymoronic. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, learn more rather than an oxymoron. Learn tautology. Tautology is important. Free gift. Male penis redundancies. Those are even more interesting. Okay? You got this? Rafael Legondi said, I am sorry, were Marshall, Grant, Eisenhower, Sherman, Patton, Pershing made with the same clothes that we have at this moment? I love history. No. Absolutely not. In fact, you probably don't, Rafael, you probably did not know this, but here's something that you don't know. Maybe most people. Everybody knows five-star generals, right? You were general in the Army. Oh, if you're Air Force. If you're Hap Arnold, Hap Arnold, do a little uh, Marshall, Eisenhower, Bradley. Okay. Um, there were two six-star generals. Who were they? Called General of the Armies. Two of them. Who were they? Six stars. Six. Two. 
And the reason why the general of the army, the five star, was in order during World War II to compete with the field marshal because, because uh, uh, what's his name was the field marshal. Okay, now who is it? Who is it? Ready? Tell me. Speak, speak, speak. Who are they? Come on. Two, only two, ever. And by the way, as we speak, nobody's looking this up. They're just thinking, what? Pat? They're just going to say things <clears throat> because people won't look it up. Washington Pershing, thank you so much. Paul Kozer, you are correct. Washington and Grant, no. Washington and Pershing. Blackjack Pershing. Blackjack Pershing was so good. Blackjack Pershing, by the way, uh, to me, to me, to me, see, Pat and Ike, you're just saying this, just throwing it out there. No, just guessing. Patton, Patton barely made full, and by the way, it's not a four-star general, it's a general. He's a four-star general. No, he's a general. Brigadier, Major, Lieutenant General, and General. Okay, one of those things. Doesn't really matter. To me, the greatest the greatest of them all was George C. Marshall. George Catlin Marshall was, was it. When he was a young man, he uh, was trying to speak to George, to, uh, to Blackjack Pershing. As Pershing was walking out, apparently ignoring Marshall, Marshall grabbed him by the arm and said, Sir, you've got to listen to me. It's like touching a wise guy. Look what they did to Shorty Spiro. Uh, remember that from the Bath Avenue boys? Uh, remember that guy? You're dead. You touch a made man, you're dead. But but a boss? Oh my God. <coughs> Put your hands on him? Well, that's what Marshall did. He did that to, to Pershing, and Pershing loved him. I think, I think Marshall was his best man, I think. So those were different times then. Those... Tom Ricks has a great piece, great stuff on the generals about w how great they were, how terrific they were. And people like, like LeMay and U.S. Grant and um, they were just a different type of people. Matthew Ridgway, Opie Smith, uh, uh, and others. In any event, now let's talk about this. Stop talking about war crimes. There are no war crimes, Okay. Thank you, Jay. Well, I know you were awesome with Dr. on Dr. Drew. Yes, I was. And Dr. Drew's pretty awesome himself. You know why? Because he let me speak. And that's a very, very smart move on his part. War crimes. There's an oxymoron. You know, that, 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 that's a tautology, sort of. You know, war or crime is war. War is, there's no rules in war. Have you read, have you read the, the UN resolution about how how Israel has violated every conceivable taking land by force. Oh my God. Like you cannot believe it. Okay? You understand it? They they it, it's it's it. Israel has violated every conceivable go to globalresearch.ca. Oh my god, Auntie, what's Amy Goodman or whatever? I mean, they are just they go through the list. Israel, according to Various resolutions. But you know what? Nothing happened. That changed because of Hamas on October the 7th. You might see some. You might see some war crimes. You might see some war crimes. So what about Hamas? Hamas isn't a country. That's having a war crime against the mafia. Hamas isn't a country. Hamas isn't associated with a country. It's not the Palestinian Authority. It's not Abu Mazen. It's not any of the other people. What's going to happen there? This has all changed. Let me ask you something. Let's go back to this. Do you think this is fueled by anti-Semitism? And let me explain something to you. I'm 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 telling right now. I am telling, uh, and I am telling very simply. I am telling our dear friends of uh, not only Israel but the rest of the world. We need, and you need, to make sure that you <coughs> absolutely, positively understand something. We are going to need someone to intervene and not the United States and not Joe Biden and not Kirby and not any of those people. You're going to need MBS, Erdogan, uh, Putin, Xi Jinping. Forget us. The United States is looked at. United States is seen by them. United States is to Israel what Hamas is to the uh, Palestinian issue. Now, I'm not saying that. That's the way they see it. You look at Hamas as being interchangeable, kind of like the 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 uh, the Luca Brasi, the the enforcers, the army. That's what they see us as. 
Now, if you don't understand this, we looked at it, we looked at Russia and China. When, when our boys were in Vietnam, for reasons I still don't understand, fighting to kill their people, who do you think was sponsoring and fortifying and promoting and and uh, and dispatching and and armoring and doing all of this to support uh, the Viet Cong and the NVA? Who? Russia, China. Absolutely. Basically, that's what wars are, land disputes. No, Vietnam wasn't about a land dispute. No, it wasn't. Uh, North Korea was not about land. It was more an invasion, but it was it was it was not like no, this is our land, and here we'll give this law back. No, it's not. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. See, remember, whenever you speak very, very axiomatically, very, very plainly, you're more often than not wrong. It's more than this. Do you think this is about a land dispute? Do you think this is about just say, okay, do you think if Israel said, okay, listen, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, there's not going to be a two-state solution, but is there anything Israel can do? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. They want them off the map. <coughs> Michael says, thank you for educating me daily. Thank you, Michael. Oh, no, no. Israel is, this This is this is gone. I mean, they, they this is gone so far. So far, this has gone beyond anything. And like I say, let me say this, I've got no beef with Israel. I like Israel. I, I think, I understand it. BB, it's got to go. Got to go. Absolutely. They cannot. Are you following this? Are you triangulating the news? Look what the Jerusalem Post says. That's as hardcore as you can get. The Jerusalem Post says, hey, BB, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you attacking people? <clears throat> Why are you attacking or blasting Gaza? Where do you think our hostages are? What are you doing? So you got that aspect. Now, listen, you know and I know, and we know what the hell is going on here. And you know and I know that a long time ago, a long time ago, something could have been said very, very specifically, something could have been said, that says they, they should have been working on this Hamas thing every single day. Do you know, are, are you reading, are you listening and hearing about how the the attack was basically not only anticipated, but but almost guaranteed from the beginning? Did you, did, are you aware of that? Are you? Well, there he is. Where have you been, stranger? U.S. tries to tempt Arab countries and Iran into war by stirring up and amplifying trouble in Israel and Palestine. But with BRICS success on the horizon, they may not take the bait. Smartest thing you've said. Spark, have you ever seen, have you ever tried to go to people and ask them, hey, what do you think about BRICS? Who? BRICS, huh? BRICS, huh? BRICS. This, this blow, BRICS, BRICS plus six, plus six, that blows my mind. I was talking the other day to a lot of folks. Who, oh, and, and you've you've met these crew, this crew. These are the ones who say that <clears throat> they think that because they're Jewish and live in New Jersey or something, that they're somehow imbued. They know nothing about this. That's like friends of mine who say, "I'm Italian." No, you're not. <coughs> you can't even speak Italian. You've never been to Italy. You got an Italian last name. You, you, you know, you're basically kind of like a Sopranos. Italian, you know, forget about, you know, that kind of thing. But but it it's this, they feel sometimes imbued and connected with it. No, it's ridiculous. Stop it. Now, let me ask you a question. How much of this do you think is anti-Semitism? And first of all, define it. What is anti-Semitism? What is it? Okay. What do you think? Explain this to me. And by the way, lest I forget... Please, you know this uh, serial well, this guy in Maine? He wasn't a serial killer. He was a mass murderer because he shot a bunch of people at one time versus over a period of time. And he killed himself. Immediately, our group is saying, well, you know, that picture of him doesn't look the same. And again, we have these experts who sit back and they go, well, this picture, <coughs> his ear folds are different. You know, that kind of thing. I don't know why they think that's important, but that's why I'm convinced that's being promoted, not by anybody we know, but people pretending to be people that we know. So... Do you think anti-Semitism plays a role in this? Do you think so? Do you? Do you think 
anti-Semitism. This that this is about not Israel, but it's about Jewish. Because anti-Israel does not necessarily mean anti-Semitic. Because there are Arabs living. Well, and, and then again, you look at what a Semite is. By the way, just for the just for the sake of argument, I always look at this. Uh, Semite uh, defined. This is always very interesting. Always go back to the words. A Semite is any member of any of the peoples who speak a Semitic language, including in particular the Jews and Arabs. What does Semite mean? A member of any number of peoples of ancient southwestern Asia, including the Akkadians, Phoenicians, Hebrews, and Arabs. Now, of course, nobody means that. Nobody cares about that. Nobody looks at that. <coughs> but do you think this makes... <laughs> this is very good. Look at what our friend Tony writes. This is actually very good. He says, BRICS is the de-dollarized world of trade without Western hegemony. You know what? Very, very good. Very, 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 very good. Okay? Look at this. Um, it's more about their beliefs in general. Western societies try to superimpose their values on all peoples. So this stuff really confuses us to the point where our kids start siding with terrorists. You don't think that other people, you don't think that China, you don't think that um, if you're living in certain uh, uh, Palestinian lands, they're not trying to. No, that, that's not just us. Sorry about that. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> One of the best series, uh, let me give you this guy's name, anti-Semitism uh, curator. I'm going to give you this guy. I'm going to give you his name and you can look for him. His name is um, hang on a minute. This, this, is, this is my one of the most, my favorite. His name is uh, hang on a minute. Oh, it goes, it goes crystal knocked and, and, and way before that, way before that, because there is something here. His name is, hang on, I'm going to get this for you. And also, I also want to remind you, always research, my friends, always research. Uh, let me see, you two. God, I wish I, I should have his name, I'm sorry. He was the director of the... He was the director of the, I'm going to get this for you. Hang on a minute. He was the director of the Holocaust Museum. Oh, here we go. Maybe this was it. Hang on a minute. I'm going to give you his name. He is so terrific, so great, and it's so, <clears throat> oh, well. Anyway, you can see it. So, I'll get his name for you. Um, have you ever heard, have you ever heard, uh, Norman Finkelstein? Wow. Listen to that one. Listen to everyone. Listen to everyone. Okay. Listen to the, the stories of everyone, all people, not just one. Listen to everyone. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? Listen to everyone. Norman Finkelstein is wow. Wow. Okay. Really something. Uh-oh. Sparky says, YouTube has been bad lately about notifying me so I can see you live. Also, I've been busy building my new woodshed for the winter. Excellent. <clears throat> By the way, make sure that when you hit that bell, there's something, there's, there's this next step you have to take. You have to notify or do something. So in any event, thank you for that. Norman Finkelstein and Alan Dershowitz went after it. I mean, they just went after it. Oh, there's Stan Lippman. Remember, vote for Stan Lippman. Genesis 4910. Okay, that settles that. Thank you, Stan. Thank you for that. Um, let's go back to this. One of the, it is believed, that one of the primary motivators 
of actual anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish, Jewish faith, Judaism, was the belief that Jews are responsible for the death of Christ. This goes back. <coughs> there was a there was a, a phrase. There, there was a famous uh, uh, mobster who referred to. I think he referred to some Jewish guy as a Christ killer or something. This is believed in many respects to be that there were there have been anti-Semitic things. Forget the protocols of the elders of Zion, but way back and. Even read the connection with Martin Luther and oh my god, it, you 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 cannot you you must understand this was so virulent, so absolutely unmistakable. Okay, now the Genesis is very interesting. I want to tell you something which is in, which is neat. The Catholic Church, of which I am a retired Catholic, always had this weird kind of connection to this. Because when the notion came up, because of course, one thing is Catholic, Catholics don't know is the Catechism or the Bible. Catholics don't know Bible, biblical history at all. And one of the things that that Pope John Paul Roncalli, uh, the 20th, I'm sorry, Pope John the 23rd said, he removed this portion of the Easter Mass regarding the perfidy of the Jews, which basically blames uh, whether the Pharisees or Caiaphas or whatever, for the death of Christ. Not Pontius Pilate, who was responsible. That's the guy who carries out the death penalty. That's the serial killer, okay? This guy, Pontius Pilate. But, no. In other realms, it's, no, it's a Jewish thing. No, 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 it's about... We can argue this point. Jesus was a troublemaker. Jesus, the Romans said, who is this guy? Son of God, uh-uh. And they're telling Pilate, you're a kind of a governor. You fix this. We don't like that. Not only mention you talk about the Pharisees or this one or that one or the Sanhedrin, blah, blah, blah. They're saying, wait a minute, who are you? You're the king of the Jews? I don't think so. Either way, Jesus is marked for, okay? He got it all coming. But it was not this very, very simple thing about the Jews killed. That's the way. That little... Uh, that little perhaps mistaken or or manufactured or incorrect, whatever you want to call it, that that twist has always been okay, the problem. Now, listen to me carefully. We can talk about this all you want, but you must understand this thing about human nature. Human nature, it takes a little bit to to a little grain of sand to build this pearl of, of racism. Why do people that we know hate black people? Not all, but a lot of people do. Why? I can understand somebody saying, look, I was raised in the 1900s. It was a time we had slaves, 19th century. <clears throat> we, we had slaves, we had this, it was a part of my, okay, fine. But today, today, what is it? It's a cultural thing, maybe. It takes, it doesn't take much for you not to like people. So there's no, it's kind of a misnomer to come up with this idea of what was the what was the motivator behind it? What was the cause? What was the genesis to use Lippmann's line of that? Let me give you a perfect example of something. One of the big differences between Catholics and Protestants is the following. Whenever you go into a Catholic church versus a Protestant church, how do you know? If I blindfolded you, said, look at the altar, don't look left, don't, don't look right, just look at the altar. Tell me, is it Protestant or Catholic? If you look, if you see Jesus on the cross, it's a crucifix, it's Catholic. If you see just a cross, then it's Protestant. Why? Because Catholics always focus on the, the, the passion of the Christ. The pain, the ter terror, the, 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 the horror, the suffering, the torture. That's what Catholics focus on. That's their thing. That's their focus. You understand what I'm saying? That's their focus. That's their thing. Stations of the cross. Uh... Oh my God, the Easter Vigil. I mean, they went through it. They just remember Passion of the Christ? Good Friday the 13th, somebody called it. It was horrible. That was also part of, of uh, Mel Gibson's own kind of a weird, uh, sadistic, uh, psychosexual, sadistic mindset in any event. So, to make a long story short, make a long story short, 
when when uh, Mel Gibson came up with the Passion of the Christ, after this horrible scene, they dealt with the resurrection. The resurrection, as you recall, was like maybe 30 seconds, gone. Gone. Why? Because his focus is not on the resurrection. That's like, eh, it's afterthought. Protestants talk about life after death, being born again, redemption. Give yourself, accept that Jesus is your true Lord and Savior, and you have life ever after, and that's fine. Catholics are still into it. Look what he did. Look what he did. Look what he did for you. Look what he did. Okay, now, I know this is very oversimplistic, but then again, that's my mental note. And you prefer overly simplistic because that's the way you like things. Now, that's kind of where we are right now. By the way, Mel Gibson never forgot that. He and his father, Hutton, who are who are uh, actually <coughs> Orthodox Catholics, never, never forgave Vatican II, never forgave removing the perfidy of the Jews reference in the Easter celebration. Never. That was big to them. Remember when Mel Gibson had this, it was a cop who pulled him over, he might have been drunk, and he referred to as either his Jewish name or something. I mean, a lot of people who, so there's a lot of folks who, yeah, I know, I've seen it. There are, there are people I've seen, you know, when you see, you you haven't been, you have not seen in, in New York. That's why I have known and I have immersed in it. But there are parts <coughs> of uh, New York, the Lubavitchers, the uh, Orthodox, the uh, Hasidim, they live by themselves. They do not necessarily uh, incorporate. They're doing just fine. They wear, I forget which one is, there's one particular has these hats they wear that are worth them. You can go through the whole thing. Very, very devout. Very, very um, um, living among. The, you're you're in the <clears throat> the largest city in the world, and yet they live almost cloistered, almost like the Amish. I find that fascinating. And yet, when we had the Crown Crown Heights business. You know who were really anti-Semitic? Black folks. <clears throat> now let me say, let me say this in general, not all black folks, but in Crown Heights, there was a real look at look at uh, Al Sharpton, Freddie's Fashion Mart, and all that other kind of stuff. This goes back forever. And it's not about Jews because of their religion. It might be because of them culturally. I know people who who uh, have problems about, uh, against Greeks. For reasons that have nothing to do with, because they they were not queens and you know they whatever. So does that count? Is that anti-Semitic? Is this anti? Is this racist? I don't know. But you take a bunch of people who love to be a part of something, something that's cool. These are people who will tattoo themselves. They will put studs in their nose. They will do all this kind of stuff. You take all these people. You put them in this world. This whatever this is. And then you have them, this is important, you have them say, hey, how would you like to take this kind of a uh, I ideological you know, confusion that you have and join us as we march against Israel, against free Palestine, and we have pizza. And, yeah, <clears throat> because most of the people have no idea what they're talking about. Now, but yet again, let me tell you this, and please understand this, and please don't take it the hard way. Israel's got to change. Excuse me. Israel's got to change. It's got to change. It's it's done. If 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 you think that merely pointing out to the world about Hamas is going to get you past, you're out of your mind. Uh uh. Sparky says many people don't realize that Muslims hold Jesus in high regard. When speaking of him, <coughs> they include "May peace be upon him." Muhammad referred to Jesus as his brother, and he said, "Yes, he was the, he was." Um, he was a prophet, not the last prophet, and wasn't the son of God. So what? I don't care about that. Somebody one time told me the difference between Sunni and Shia. This, no, this versus this. Something about when you pray, this versus that. I don't know. There's some, there's various ones, the cousin of such as, I don't know. I'm not, a, but there's no, I don't this isn't about religion. <clears throat> this is about Israel having this, basically having, it was supposed to be 50% of Israel, but now they got 80%, whatever it is. 
You've got Israel versus these people. And there's all kinds of blame. Number one. First, fact. In 2005, Ariel Sharon, Ariel Sharon, the, 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 the butcher, said, all right, we're pulling out of Gaza. You're what? We're pulling out of Gaza. We're pulling out. No, we're not. Yes, we are. And he told Israelis who were there, get out. And they evicted Israel, Israelis, and people were crying, and that's my home. And he said, that's it. This is theirs. We're leaving. We're leaving. Say goodbye. And they left the, the oh, greenhouses and this and that. They were destroyed. Or anyway, 2005. That's it. Remember that. See, Ben Shapiro, bless his heart, loves to tell you, oh, that's it. Ben, would you care to go any further? No, that's it. Ben Shapiro will tell you, there's nothing to talk about. Israel left Gaza in 2005, and that's it. Everything else is their fault. Next, next issue. It's their fault. That's it. Period. Are you sure about that, Ben? Ben plays with his crowd. Ben's not going to give you nuance. No, no, no. Ben, are you sure that's it? Because if you think it's so, then, then we're saying, you know what? We're wasting our time. We left. But they're saying, well, that's not it. They're calling this apartheid. John Mearshammer calls uh, Gaza, whatever, that this is, this is basically a modern apartheid. This is, what, this is a word that's become, it's more than just a phrase. Now, what do you want to do about it? You want to talk about it? You want to discuss it? Or do you want to just ignore it? I want to discuss it. That's number one. Number two, the Gazans will say, listen, you're right about this. We're, all of the money, all the stuff that comes, we're not getting this. Hamas is getting this. And we can't do anything because we basically had, I think, an election once in 2006 or something. I don't know. They were elected one time. And the, these people are just, they're not even here. They're in Qatar or they're in Cyprus. They're like Zelensky. They're making millions. They're family. They're not, they're not living through this. We have to pay for this. And the re, and Israel will say, well, the reason why we have these, the reason why it's cut off is because every time we allow things in, Hamas fortifies us and use, uses water and this water. Okay. Water and pipes and plumbing or whatever as rockets. That's the official account. You want to dispute that? Go ahead. So what do you want to do? What do you want to do? So you tell me, what do you want to do? I've just presented this to you. Okay, Mr. Uh, greatest thing in the world. Little brush. Oh, feels great. What do you want to do, Mr. Tell me. How do you fix this? What do we do? We tell, we tell Israel, stop surrounding. Stop you know, um, having this 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 cordon, this fence around it. Stop that. Stop that. Israel says, but they're bombarding us. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> they're suffering. <clears throat> they're suffering and we're getting shelled. We're getting hit with rockets. What do you want us to do? So you tell me, what do you want to do? Everybody. The world is not talking about that. The world doesn't even recognize Israel. The world is not saying, wait a minute, we, in addition, yeah, Israel's bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they got a point. You're never going to hear that. You never hear anybody who says Israel's got a point. Israel's right. What about it? They don't care at all about Israel. They don't care at all about Israel. They're not even thinking about it. So what do we do? I'm asking you, what do you do? What do you do? Nobody. Nobody. What do you do? Tell me what you do. I've disappointed you. I want you to go there. I want you to fix it. What do you do? Tell me. What do you do? Everybody answer my question. The UN has to recognize Palestine as a legitimate state. Okay. It's a legitimate state. Good. Now what? Now what? Palestine. Which Palestine? Gaza? Uh, or West Bank? UN Resolution 242, let's read. UN Resolution uh, 242, let's see what that says. So much for the UN. <clears throat> that says, uh, UN 242, uh, it is, this is the one was adopted unanimously by the UN Security Council 
1967, in the aftermath of the Six-Day War, it was adopted under the preamble says, okay, let's see what this says. Let's see what this is. And let's see how it applies to us now. Uh, this is in, this was in uh, 1967. And let's see what it does now. Preamble, land for peace. Okay. French version, negotiating and drafting. Let me go through this. Uh, what would you like us to do? Interpretations. Israel interprets Resolution 242 as calling for withdrawal from territories as part of a negotiated peace and full diplomatic recognition, the extent of withdrawal. Initially, the resolution was accepted by Jordan. Israel, you want to, what, you want to go through this? You want to go through it? You want to see what, what we're missing, perhaps? How about war crimes? Want to go through war crimes? Anybody want to say, what's a war crime? You want to put the... Who's a signatory to the uh, to the war crimes tribunal? War crimes. Who? Anybody? Anybody? You don't know. You just, there's, there's no answer to this. There's no answer. The Balfour Declaration. Hello. No, no. Goodbye. That's not the answer. I just want people to know I know what the Balfour Declaration is. That's not going to... That That's the problem. Not the problem, but that was this... <clears throat> remember, prior to it, that's not the answer. What do we do? Well, it's a Balfour Declaration. Yes, I know that. Genesis 4, 4. No, 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 no. What's the answer? What's the answer? Look at this. Apparently, apparently, I can't buy a Super Chat because trying to locks up my entire YouTube. Is that true? It locks up? If you say, hello, <clears throat> that locks up your thing? The UN should be dissolved? You know what? I probably would have no problem with that whatsoever. The UN is a complete and total waste of time. A complete and total waste of time. <clears throat> Period. Look at this. Five times. Does this make sense? Worrisome needs to be given some. Now, how do we fix this? Again, I'm asking you a particular question. How do we fix this? How do we? What is the answer? What will satisfy people? Use critical thinking. What is it that you want? How would you accomplish it? What would you do? Tell me. Nothing from the past will stop what is happening today. Wonderful. Now, Chris, by the way, says Trump. I think Trump would do a tremendous job. What do we do today? I'm trying this again. Annex Gaza. Annex it? No, they just gave it back. Not gave it back. No. Trump couldn't even control the pandemic. You're right about that. They didn't let him. I don't know if anybody really wants this to be. That's a good, that's a good point, PK. Trump was not a Palestinian sovereign state. Okay, yeah, you want a two-state solution, correct? Now, Matthew says, definitely not a two-state solution. Stay blessed said, a Palestinian sovereign state. So what do you want? Palestinian sovereign state there? Someplace else? I want to know answers. Secularism. This isn't about that. Okay, again, you see what's happening right now. Nobody's answering the question because it's a very difficult question. I'm asking you, very simple. What I, I've turned it over to you. Here's a pen. Write up a deal and they'll sign it. What is it? Tell me what it is. Tell me. Nothing will happen until America decides what's best for itself. That doesn't have anything to do with them. Nothing. On their land in Palestine. Where is Palestine? What, what do you do with the settlements? What do you do? Which Palestine? Where is Palestine? Not Balfour. No, was it? No, no, no. No, 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 no. That's been done. The Balfour Declaration got us into it. That's been, that's not it. <clears throat> I'm going to try this again. You see how difficult this is? We have some of the smartest people in the world here. What is it? There is no deal possible. Well, you're close. Space doesn't allow nor time permit. That's a nice one, Mark. That's a good one. I don't have the time nor the inclination, nor do I have an audience that appreciates a level of sagacity of what I'm about to say. Come on, what do we do? Quick. Sorry, nothing to do with the subject, but 
why aren't you teaching law and history? Why aren't you? No. Well, I am. Who will pay for the damage? What damage? On whose side? Who pay? Who pays Israel for all the shelling from Hamas? Who? And who pays Gaza for the what? What do you do? You see what this is? No deal possible? There have been five prior ends to the conflict. Peaceful deals in place. Well, you know, it's funny you say that. Uh, Ehud Barak, uh, Ehud Olmert, uh, on two separate occasions, uh, Arafat said, no deal. No deal possible. Remember that? Abba even said that they never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Dearborn, Michigan can become the new Palestine. Well, they don't want to do that. Of course, the USA pays for Israel's sins. And you know very well who created hummus. Yes, this wonderful chickpea concoction. You are right. Eric Weinstein said, they were offered a two-state solution or a chant. They chose the chant from the river to the sea. Eric Weinstein has no interest in seeing both sides. He doesn't. He's very good about a lot of stuff, but not this one. And even though I love him, did you see him and Sam Harris? Well, that was brutal. Oh, Sam Harris doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Sam Harris just tries to be brilliant. You can't negotiate with terrorists. Sure you can. Who's a terrorist? What's a terrorist? Goes, Excuse me, pardon me. Are we a terrorist? Are we a terrorist? Ask Japan. Ask Vietnam. You can't, you can't use trite Reagan phrases. Come on, get to the bottom of this. Come on, let's go. I'm reading this. Very, very good. Okay. Told you before, here's how it works. Number one, <clears throat> I don't want Biden. I don't want Blinken. I don't want anybody. I don't want uh, uh, UK. I don't want France. You're over here. Go over there. Keep your mouth shut. Mohammed bin Salman, bring in these guys. They'll talk. They speak the language. They'll talk. MBS was this far away from making a deal with Israel. He wants it more than anybody else. Uh, everybody's going to tell Erdogan, make up your mind, because he's schizophrenic. He's schizo, schizophasic when he speaks. He talks complete nonsense. But anyway, Erdogan, Putin, Xi Jinping, everybody, they work it out. And here's the deal. Stop. Stop. You're going to make a deal with you. Israel, you're going to let people in. We will, we will, we, we, if you agree, we, to help F the UN, we'll do this. We'll have <coughs> our peacekeepers there. And if you, if you decide to blow up a Saudi Arabian peacekeeper, a Turkish peacekeeper, we'll do it. Forget the UN. We'll do it our way. You go there and you keep an eye on this, all right? You got to let people in. These people are suffering. That's number one. Listen to what they're saying. They're not making this up. Number two, you got to treat these people like human beings. Have you heard their stories about the Israeli soldiers? Of course, the Israeli soldiers will tell you, well, let me tell you our stories. And they both got stories, of course. But this, this inhumanity has got to stop. I don't care how you want to look at it. It doesn't really matter. Have DC back off. They've kept it a fire. Absolutely. So understand, MBS comes in. All right, that's enough. Here's what we're going to do. Abu Mazen. <coughs> Who runs the who runs Gaza? And Hamas? Okay, I'll talk with Hamas. Okay, fine. You're in this group. Israel, bring your person here. Here's what we're gonna do. They're saying it's apartheid. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta knock this shit off. That's it. That's the way it is. Sorry. They're living in squalor. Enough out of you, Hamas. You gotta stop with the tunnels and this. The first time we know exactly what you're doing. The first time you make us look bad and you fire a missile at you at Israel. We know where to go. We know where to go. We can we can cut you to shreds in ways you never even thought. And I don't mean physically, but we're going to do this, all right? That's enough. This is your first concern. Gaza, they're living in whatever. Israel would say, you know what? If they stop this, if they stop rocketing us, we have no problem. We gave them Gaza. <clears throat> Deal number one. Is that it? Okay, we know, here's Gaza, that's a Hamas rocket. And Hamas, guess what? I'm going to hold you responsible. The fellow who speaks, whatever his name is, I'm going to hold you responsible. You tell your people nothing. 
Okay, you got it? If, and remember who Khashoggi is. Remember who he was? Remember what MBS did to him? You don't mess around with these people. They'll jigsaw you. I mean, they they do not. So this has been Salman's approach. Don't make me look bad. Israel says, okay, we'll start with this one little step, little baby step. All right. Okay. You want to bring in your water and your pipe? Okay. The first time, the first time there's a rocket, that's it. Okay, is that a deal? Hamas, say it. Head of Hamas, Memela, whatever his name is. Call your call your goons and tell them that's it. If there's one rocket, or somebody may try to you know false flag it or whatever it is, but but if they do that, if they do that, it's over. You understand that? That's rule number one. Because the, the these two million people, they're living in squalor. This is ridiculous. And by the way, you've got to understand something, Hamas. You had this chance. They had this chance because of you. You did this. So stop. You know, you, you can blame Israel for a lot of stuff. Okay, but not this. They got what they wanted in 2005. And you have been... Now, we haven't talked about the West Bank yet. That's going to be it. Now, of course, you're going to say, Joe, back off. Everybody back off. Uh, Gavin Newsom, back off. Macron, back off. UK, I can't remember his name. The minister, back off. Don't worry about this. Just, just enough. I want all your ships out of the way. Did you, did you hear what McGregor said, Colonel McGregor? He said our ships are so. Oh, Iran, we got to bring Hezbollah in here too. Oh yeah, yeah, bring them in. You know what that's going to do to, to the U.S.? It's like they're they're negotiating it. Yep, it's none of your business. You screw things up all the time. Stop this rhetoric. Stop this. Tell Lindsey Graham to shut up. Boy, that guy. I'm not gonna go any further, but I think we you know I think you know what I'm thinking about. Anyway. Tell them to shut up. The Liz Cheney's and the Newlands and all that. Just enough of that. That's the first step. Okay? You got what you wanted. No UN, no US, you do it. And Ben and, and Ben Zaman says, you know what? I'm gonna and you'll look like a champ, Benny. You'll look like a champ. You're going to be the guy to bring peace to the Middle East. This will be your, this will be your, your oh, status. Your my God, you you will be you will be the, you'll be everything you can imagine. And by the way, this is so complicated because then you got militias, you've got the the, the Houthis in Yemen, and but the, and this goes for all of the, all of the militias and the like too. That's how you get it done. That's how you get it done. Not the UN, not Joe Biden. Uh-uh. Those people. They'll talk. Because what they want to do is they know ain't nobody likes Hamas. And even though, even though they don't like Israel, they would love to make to do deals with them because MBS is a businessman. Who do you want to work with? You know what Israel's done since 48? This is like the tech. Oh my God! They, it's, it's become the own Silicon Valley. It's they have the the technology and the the. I mean, they are incredible. Ben Salman wants to work with them, not some lunatic sending rockets from that. They're not into that. You think Ben Salman? The guy's a secularist. And by the way, Ben Salman's biggest worry is that his Saudi Arabian folks turn loose and come after him. Ben Salman's been doing everything, bringing Formula One racing and golf and soccer. Everything up to and including letting women drive. And he's doing, he's trying to change everything. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. All right, my friends. You got you got it? You got what's going on? Good, 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 good. Now, stop paying attention to the usual news with the usual people. Turn off cable news. Fox News is a joke. It is a bad joke. Listen to what other people are saying. Watch RT and Al Jazeera and first thinking Muslims terrific. Listen to what the other side is saying. Not Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro's a hack. Ben Shapiro, Prager, the usual suspects, they just say whatever they have to do to keep the metrics up, but they're they're not interested. They, they don't want to settle anything. They want to explain things. I want to settle this. 
I don't want to keep telling you, I'm right. I'm right and they're wrong. Yeah, yeah, we know you're right. You got it? You got what I'm saying? Does this make sense to you? Now, one more thing. I forgot to tell you this, and this is important. I hope, my dear friends, I hope you have recognized the fact. Do not forget, do not forget our dear friends at, remember this. Where is it? Where's my banner? Here's my banner. Oh, remember this. Cutting room, February 3rd. Cutting room. All of this is what I'm saying is on the uh, um, description section of this. Okay? You got what I'm saying? Which is very good, too. Also, remember this. I mentioned My Patriot Supply. Go to preparewithlionel.com. And also our dear friends, Mike Lindell and MyPillow. MyPillow, right now, they've got, have you seen... Do you know when your whole thing, when your whole focus is pillows and blankets and sheets and comfort, and you can say, let's apply this to slippers. They sell more slippers than you can imagine. Take advantage of this. Go to MyPillow.com or, and use promo code Lionel, and there you have it. By the way, since I'm on the subject, have you, have you seen, I think this is, have you seen Dirty Man Safe? I haven't been talking about this as much as I can, but. You know the best place to hide valuables is in, is in the ground. No metal detectors. No, who? Nobody ever goes to your house and says, "All right, tell me where you buried it." No, it's always where's the safe? I know you got a safe in here. Show me where it is. Well, we'll find it. Pull back things. You can always find it. Now open it up. Not if it's in the ground. That's a great idea. But how do you do that? Dirty man safe. Dirty man safe. Also, what happens if you need? Generators and powered. What happens? What happens? Lion energy. You notice how all my stuff is great. All my, my I just, it's just, it's so smart, so obvious. That's all I want to tell you. And thank you, dear friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Raphael Legonde, Eric Thaddeus Walters, thank you. You were terrific. Michael, thank you. Sparky, we love you. Stan Lippman, everybody, the lovely and talented Stan Lippman. Thank you for your sagacity, your sapience, and your incredible ability to, to uh, reduce the obvious into the palatable. All right, friends, we'll see you to, now. Let me see. Okay, we'll see you at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern time. That works perfectly. 7 p.m., okay? For the evening piece. You got it? 7 p.m. Eastern. All right, dear friends? Good. All right. We'll talk to you then. Have a great and glorious day. Don't ever change to me that sincerely. And until then, remember, remember this. The monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue ya. Da-da.